It's easy to fall into a routine, isn't it? Often we even welcome it. It's comfortable and predictable. We get into a rhythm and one day passes into another. It's Tuesday, so we go to the novena, we pray and spend time with the Lord. We spend time with family and friends. Things happen here and there, but we handle it in due course. Now, I'm not casting this situation in a negative light, per se. Rather, this is what St. Teresa of Avila would call a well-ordered life. It's a good thing, even a very good thing. But life is a journey in which we are to progress mature and advance in many ways, the most important of which is through a deepening of our relationship with the Lord. In that aspect of life, we can never be satisfied with routine and predictability. And so every year, Holy Mother Church, in her wisdom, gives us the gift of Lent, whereby we follow our Lord's footsteps in a deeper way. We accompany him on his journey of love as he makes his way to the ultimate sacrifice of Calvary. By this, the routine of our well-ordered life gets interrupted, gets mixed up a bit. This, too, can be a good thing, and even a most excellent thing. St. Teresa gives us some counsel and insight on this well-ordered life. so. Before continuing, let's review what she considers the chief characteristics of a well-ordered life. A Christian who lives a well-ordered life practices the virtues and endeavors to advance in them. They take the precepts of the church seriously, attending Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, going to confession, tithing, praying, and the like. They raise their children in the faith and fulfill obligations to family, neighbor, and work. Theirs is a life, insofar as they are able, one that is disciplined and structured. And again, this is not bad. Rather, it's good. Would that all Catholics were as diligent, right? But because, in fact, we are mere wayfarers on earth, because our journey is to our eternal home, St. Teresa also cautions us that a well-ordered life is not our goal. Our progress toward sanctity doesn't end there by a long shot. Indeed, while St. Teresa praises many aspects of a well-ordered life, she also identifies shortcomings and imperfections that are typically found therein. The first of which is such persons are often overly disturbed by minor trials. Perhaps that's because what was once so well-ordered is no longer so when trials come. Now, on the face of it, this sounds quite reasonable and a quite measured criticism, an area we all likely need to improve in. It seems quite reasonable until St. Teresa tells us what she considers a minor trial to be. Her examples include the complete loss of one's wealth, or the complete loss of one's reputation. Trials not unlike, I suppose, those of Job. You know, minor ones. Suddenly it doesn't sound quite so measured and reasonable anymore, does it? But that leads us to the second part of her critique of the well-ordered life. Namely, that people at this stage of spiritual maturity often suppose they have everything figured out. They have an illusion of self-sufficiency, that they're in control, and that our God-given reason is a sure guide for the whole of Christian life. But God intended that reason should serve us 
not the other way around. Does that sound familiar? Jesus said the same thing to the Pharisees about the Sabbath and for the same reason. For if used improperly, reason can become a means by which we put a boundary around love a means by which we limit faith. Let me pose this question to you. Is our Lord's love for us reasonable? Is it? It is most assuredly not reasonable. Is it reasonable to leave 99 sheep to go look for one? To find a lost coin and then spend more money celebrating that you found it than the coin itself is worth? To sell all you have for a single pearl? Is it reasonable to love someone who spits in your face? Who scourges you? Who mocks you? Who plots against you and then crucifies you like they did our Lord? Is it reasonable to love someone who persecutes persecutes you, saying all manner of evil against you? It is not reasonable. Not according to mere human wisdom, anyway. And yet, our Lord assures us that we are blessed when things like that happen to us. It seems clear that our Lord wants to move beyond human reason, beyond reasonable and rational, to a place where, according to St. Teresa, love overwhelms reason. That's where our Lord wants us, where love overwhelms reason. An interesting way of putting it, don't you think? Love overwhelming reason. I think the following question is one each of us should take to prayer and contemplate. In my life, does love overwhelm reason or does reason overwhelm love? The key to being able to answer yes to the former, to answering the way our Lord was, is humility. It's only when we walk the the road of meekness and humility, it's only when we humbly rely on His grace that our Lord so generously gives to us that we can journey beyond having a well-ordered life to a place where our Lord can also fashion for us a well-ordered soul a soul that loves God and neighbor beyond all reason, to a soul that is well-ordered, that is, to a soul that is ordered according to love.